Hello, this is Professor Bennett from DigitalAudioTheory.com. In this programming example, 13.4.1, we will look at applying frequency domain processing using the DFT in a real-time manner. In the last programming example, we saw that in order to compute a single frequency bin, we have to analyze the entire audio signal. This is clearly not feasible in real time, so the approach is to break up the audio into small frames and perform the frequency domain processing on each of these small chunks, which might be just tens of milliseconds. The process of framing audio does come with a cost, though. Some artifacts are introduced. First, a loss of frequency resolution will occur, where instead of seeing thin spectral lines, we instead see broader lobes. But additionally, crosstalk will occur with side lobes that can push small amounts of energy from the true frequency bin to other remote bins. But these problems can be addressed through the process of windowing, in which an envelope is applied to the entire frame, tapering the levels uh, at the edges of the frame down to or near zero. There are plenty of different types of windows, each which come with their own pros and cons. A Han window is commonly found in audio processing because it is pretty balanced beha between having good frequency resolution and good side lobe rejection. But since we are artificially changing the value of some samples within the window, we actually need to overlap the frames so that no information is lost. For a Han window, the amount of overlap required is 50% of the frame length. One cool visualization of framing and windowing and overlapping process is called a spectrogram. Spectrograms are the graphical representation of the frequencies in a signal as they evolve over time. With time on the horizontal axis and frequency on the vertical axis and the magnitude encoded in color or intensity. Spectrograms are an interesting way of visualizing speech since the harmonics produced during speech production, known as formants, are known to have levels that change depending on the phoneme that's being spoken. In this example, you will first record three seconds of your voice producing the phoneme ah, the vowel sound in cat. Then you will visualize the formants with a spectrogram and finally isolate a single formant to bandpass filter using real-time spectral processing. The first step is to record your, uh, a vocal sound using audio recorder and to extract this data into a variable X. It may be helpful to use a higher range of your voice to spread the formants out a bit. So let's do that. Let's capture it 44 1, 16 bits, mono. So we're going to set up the audio recorder. Next, using record blocking, let's record three seconds. Here we go. Uh, in case anybody wants to hear that, I guess we have to make sure it's there. OK, it's there. So uh, we're going to truncate the length to a power of 2. And when you run this section of code, note that the microphone will turn on and perform audio capture, so be ready. So we're going to pull out and truncate to, let's see, 2 to the 17th divided by fs. Yeah, nearly 3 seconds. Next, we're going to visualize the phoneme using the spectrogram function. This function analyzes the input with the user-specified window length. Let's use 1024. Also, with the user-specified overlap amount. So we're going to overlap by 93.75%. That's more than we need, uh, but it's going to help give us better temporal resolution. Uh, we need to pass the sample rate, which we've already set and the preferred orientation for the frequency axis, which we're going to set to a y-axis, which is what I call the vertical axis. An octave, instead of using spectrogram, you're going to use specgram. So let's take a look. Ah, almost there. There we go. Beautiful. 
So if we zoom in, each of these dark lines, yellow lines, is a different format. OK, so let's stock that for now. Notice the presence of several harmonics above the fundamental pitch. I'm going to select the seventh harmonic, which happens to be the flat seven relative to the fundamental, to isolate and bandpass. For my voice, let's see. This is around one, two. I may need another recording. <laughs> I think it's going to be this one right here. Let's check this one out. So this is 0 0.86 kilohertz. So we'll create a fourth order bandpass filter using Butter, a Butterworth filter, centered around this frequency location. And then we'll convert it to the frequency domain for spectral processing using FreakZ. So, maybe it's this one. Let's stick with the filter that's in place. You'll, f you'll figure out for your own voice where the center frequency is, and then go down a little bit and above a little bit to isolate your particular format. So we're going to define the filter. Uh, it's going to be a fourth order bandpass filter from uh, this lower frequency to this higher frequency. And then we're going to convert it to the frequency domain using 1024 points. We're going to save that as H. OK. The spectrogram was for visualization purposes only, to isolate the formant location and set up the filter. Moving forward, we're going to select a different window type. This first involves creating the windows. Here we're going to set up a Han, a Han window of length 1024. Additionally, special half windows need to be created for the first and last 512 samples of the signal. Um, the last pre-processing step is to define the jump size and determine the number of frames. With a 50% overlap, we know that there will be twice as many frames as there would be with no overlap, minus one since we lose a half window at the onset and offset. And the jump size, or distance from the start of one window to the start of the next window, let's say this is our frame length, uh, is simply the overlap amount times the window length. So that's how many frames we have. And then our jump is just half of our window length. Finally, we move on to the actual processing. We're going to iterate over all the frames and first select which window to use. If we're in the first frame, we'll use the first window. If we're in the last frame, we'll use the last window. But in the vast majority of the cases, we're just going to use a regular Han window. Next, a frame of audio is extracted according to the, these indexes and then windowed and converted to the frequency domain. So here we calculate the start index, the end index. So this specifies the first and last sample of our frame. We're going to. Uh, grab our boxed frame uh, right out of the audio using the start and end index. And then we're going to apply the appropriate window to that frame, uh, to that box frame. Here we're going to take our frame and convert it to the frequency domain using FFT and 1024 uh, uh, data points. Finally, our frame, our filtered frame in the frequency domain, 
is the frame of audio, windowed frame of audio, times h, which if you'll recall, was the fourth order bandpass filter that was isolating a single format. Lastly, we need to take this frame uh, and convert it back to the sample domain with IFFT. Note the use of real here. Uh, even though the imaginary portions are fully canceled mathematically, sometimes computationally a tiny residue remains which should just be ignored and discarded. Lastly, that frame gets overlapped and added with the rest of our output signal. So let's listen to this whole thing together. OK, so what I did is I accidentally turned on the microphone again. So let's do this again. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's listen just to the filtered version. So you can repeat this final section of code with different bandpass filter, uh, filter center frequencies to hear each of your formats. You can iterate up first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, as high as you want to go. Or contrarily, you can switch this to a band stop filter to remove certain formats and hear how your voice changes. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on spectrograms and real-time spectral processing. Thanks for watching.